Boy, what are you doing over there? You taking know. those clips out for under your inner fender? Just you gotta put some it. extra cold air intake right here on his car to get some of that seven extra horsepower. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Here comes the video. What's up, GBG? So, the first mod to the Dart. This is the first thing we started out by doing. And it's a cold air intake. As you can see, it's an engine cold air intake for the 2.0 series. We're gonna install that today. We're looking for those seven horsepower gain, better gas mileage. We're gonna see how it goes, and uh, yeah, here we go. There's more. What? Why? Oh no. Oh no. No. There's more tape. They always have to put more tape on the boxes. Yeah. Like, isn't it uh, on car parts? There's always too much tape on the boxes. Like, what is this? But here we go. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, that wrapping paper. That's the best part right there. The paper. The instructions. Do we? The instructions are always the best. But who needs instructions? Do we need that? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's the, this is no, no, this is the this is actually the quarter intake right here. <laughs> no, what? Uh, that's a should have known that. <laughs> oh yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Piping. More piping. So as you guys see right here, this is the actual filter. This is what you're going to be putting on the very end. Right here, we have some more piping. This comes from the back of the motor. Then we come down all the way over the front down there. We come down to the front, which is going to attach into this guy. This is your bracket to attach where the original air box, air box, well, not box, box attaches. Um, then we have all of our clamps, all of our hoses in here, and all the parts that we need to get this done. See, we took that front cover off. In order to do that, you have to go back here, unplug your uh, what is this, mass airflow sensor. There's gonna be a little ring around here. You're gonna have the screwdriver and you're gonna untwist that little ring. It's just like just like these. You're gonna untighten that. So the whole thing comes off. You're gonna loosen this one up as well. Just pull it back. That whole back piece will just come right off the top. Then from there, what you wanna do is you wanna un uncharge, uh, take your discharge pipe off. Take your fuel rail out of here. It's just a little pin in there. Now there's another one we gotta get to, which is down in there, which we're gonna hit to now. We'll be right back with that. So as Kevin was saying before, this is like his cover that comes on the stock, and then this back part right here, I can't really point, but like, it's like that back point right here um, is where that, like the whole like piping is. It's, it's incorporated. It's incorporated, so all of the air travels through this cover underneath the back part here. Yeah. As you can see, it travels all the way down there. And it comes up here, so that's all right there. That's everything in there. So yeah, here we go. Heck yeah, we're gonna change all that, make it better. We definitely forgot to do the most important thing, which was disconnect your battery terminal. If you're ever working on your car, just do it, just because you're probably gonna be running in with electrical things, unless you're doing suspension. But if you're working on an engine bay, definitely disconnect your. Uh, just dis little the negative. Your just take it right it's off. Dark, but you know. Yeah, because otherwise you just you see that electricity right there. Just a little bit of. Oh, I hear it. Up, yeah, just just it. just remember just uh, disconnect your uh, battery terminal just because you just don't want to get shocked. So, and definitely, guys, if uh, if you don't already, definitely go follow us on our Snapchat, just Gas Puddle Garage, and also follow us on Instagram too, it's just Gas Puddle Garage as well. We post a lot more content on there, but before you'll see it in the video. Um, so. If you want to follow us more, definitely go follow us on our Snapchat and Instagram. We also have Twitter and Facebook that we don't really use yet, um, but we're definitely really, uh, we post a lot on Instagram and uh, we're starting to post a lot more on Snapchat, so definitely go follow us. So as Kevin said before, you have to take this whole inner fender out just to get to, so, there's like a bolt under there just yeah. to There's just two ways to get there. You can either take out this inner fender or you can take off the entire front bumper. Probably just so we're going to take out the antenna fender. Yeah, it's definitely that's, a better that's idea, definitely just because, idea. you know, we're not really trying to take off the front bumper right now, even though it probably look really cool, but inner fender seems a little bit easier and a little bit faster, so we'll definitely let you guys know if we run into any problems. What was that thing? The freaking pain in the butt taking these clips out. This dang pain in the butt take those clips out right there. I'm telling you right we're now. Need a, right there, you're going to need some... Uh, Need some mechanic gloves. Need your gloves. Look at that. You got that little clip out. That's a nice clip. You look at that clip. That's a nice little clip right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, Calvin. What's up, dude? You a six? A six? Let me check. Uh, let's see what's this. That's a ten. That's an eight. 
Go fish, man. I don't know. Dude, dude, I only got eight, dude. All right, I guess I'll just do it the, you know, with you my can hands. use the pliers? All right, yeah, that's, that, works. that works, yeah. Yeah, taking your front bumper off would definitely be it. No. I feel like it would just be Put it back on? Can you imagine putting that back on? <laughs> just putting it back on, dude, trying to line up all those holes? Oh, heck no. Putting the holes with the nuts? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Holy nuts, I mean. <laughs> you can't say it with a straight face. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Can you guys say that holy nuts with a straight face? Cause it's not possible. Yeah, holy nuts. <laughs> I'm not. I just have a child in mind, dude. I just can't say that. See, he couldn't find the six, and so I have to unscrew these with my hand. I told you to go fish, dude. Oh, well. <laughs> what was that? And just railing them in there. Oh, oh shoot! I oh, 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 I got him, guys. Oh, 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 I got him. Oh, wow, that was a big one, guys. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So. Airbox, it's coming out. Now there's something very tricky on this that I didn't check out until very, basically a minute ago. It was really hard to get that back piece out. So basically everything comes out. There's nothing actually that you have to get from underneath, inside the wheel well. Um, it's just that you have to pull it out. And there's this one little tricky spot right here. If you see this guy right here, uh, probably not. But it's held on to this cable right here by some electrical tape. All you really wanna do is get a pair of snips Snip the electrical tape, be very careful though, because there is wires right here that you don't want to snip. So don't snip the wires, just get the electrical tape and it should come right out. Alrighty guys, we kind of ran into a few problems. Oh, there we go, you can see. We ran into a few problems with just like clips and uh, oh. just like, <laughs> yeah, the comms for sure. I kind of saw like, we feel like we got some food poisoning. We didn't feel too well, but anyway. We ran into a few problems with like clips and then trying to get them off and then just like dodge in general. Like, Chrysler. it's the Chrysler, I guess. Like, they just put, like, make things so much harder on you. Anyway, we finally got it in there. It's pretty dark here. Just a light real quick. So, it's an engine. Connects all the way back here. It's really cool. Um, I just like, it's like black piping. It actually, there's like black sparkles to it. Uh, but then it goes all the way down here. And then the colder intake. So, Kevin's bolting it up. Making it look nice. It bolts in right here at the top, right there. Connects over here, and then Kevin is actually going to leave the cover off on his, uh, on his like the cover for the motor, and it's just, it just looks really cool. Um, but the the quarter intake goes down right there in the like kind of like in the wheel well almost. So we're almost there. It took us a little bit, probably like two hours to do this. It's probably like a really easy job if you like. We didn't know what we we're doing. Um, we put cold iron takes, yeah. As always, we really don't know what we're doing. We're kind of just like piecing together, looking at the directions. And, uh, but it came together and it looks really cool. We're kind of excited. It's kind of late right now, um, cause we have clean culture in the morning. It's like 1230 right now. And we have to be up probably at like 630. Just cause we have to like go wash some Miata still. But everything's coming together and we're really excited to actually drive the dart tomorrow and see how it goes. So we'll definitely give you an update tomorrow once everything is in and then how is the drive with it so we'll get right back with you tomorrow peace out guys what's up guys so i was editing the video and i realized that we never actually went and talked about the exhaust and how it sounds and how it's driving and kind of how much power it added and how the gas mileage is going but now i want to talk to you guys about it right now so i've had it on the car for probably about a week now we actually put it on last friday um, and now it's this Friday, which is after clean culture. So it was really, really nice to hear it. And uh, we were kind of tired afterwards, so we never actually kind of talked about it the next day. But I've had it for a week. The sound is amazing. It makes me want an exhaust a lot more. I'll probably wait on that for a little bit just because I want to enjoy the exhaust that's already on it. Um, it actually doesn't sound bad for a dart. Darts don't have very bad stock exhaust, especially for the 2.0. Um, personally speaking, they sound really good. Um, there's always better out there, but you know, they don't sound bad for stock. So when I added that cold air intake into it, it actually added a much deeper tone to it, which is really nice. I wasn't expecting that. I was kind of expecting it for a little more performance, a little bit of gas mileage, but not much else. Um, and it definitely has increased the gas mileage and it probably, I will say, even Calvin's driven my car, definitely increases the horsepower. I could definitely feel it. Um, it's actually crazy when you're in second gear between three and 4,000 RPMs, you can feel the vibrations of the exhaust, which is something I've wanted. 
I want to be able to hear my car, especially when you drive a manual, you want to be able to hear it so that when you're shifting, it's, you don't have to look, and it's more of a sound thing. So it's a lot nicer to be able to hear it and shift, hear it and shift. So that's a lot nicer. Um, but yeah, why don't we go into a couple of exhaust notes here. So here we go. Alrighty guys, so like I said, it's been about a week since I've had it on. The only problem that I've experienced is if you guys see right here, when you go inside, the uh, mass airflow sensor actually, it, it's just kind of like, in, it's, it's just pushed in, so it kind of pops out. And it's not very nice how it pops out. Um, it it kind of does it while I was driving for a little bit, for the first time I was driving it. I had to really seat it in there. I know it's probably going to sound like, okay, what's he saying? That one video I made about my dart, and you guys are like, wait, what is he saying? This is so like, what? But yes, it is doing that. Um, but I really like the system. It really looks really nice, the black all the way through. I don't know if you guys can see this right now. Let me get my light out real quick and help out with that. But it looks really nice so far. Um, it's all black. So it goes black and then it kind of comes down and tucks through down there. You see that? Um, I, I left the cover off just because it's a lot easier that way. Um, when I had the cover on, the cover actually doesn't, wow, I can't hold on with two hands. The cover doesn't look too good on it. You actually have to cut up the, the, uh, the, the cover for it to fit on there, for the entire intake to fit in there. So I just didn't put it back on. I probably won't. Um, maybe at some point in time I'll take off the headers and get new headers, really cool headers to put on it. But for right now, I'm just going to run with the intake. Um, and in fact, today I had a really great experience with gas mileage. Um, I got about 34 miles of the gallons. and added about 2 miles to the gallon. About to my, uh, I travel about 30 minutes to work on the highway. So it's not too bad on the highway. Um, during the, I haven't really driven it around as much um, as just streets wise. So I can't really say as far as like just gas mileage there. But I will say on the highway, it's a lot better. And there's definitely a lot more power. It's way torquier. The power kicks in a lot, e like, a lot sooner. Um, and you can actually feel it come in now, which was something I didn't feel at all before. So I'm really happy with it basically overall. Um, I would definitely recommend any of you guys who have a Dart, a 2.0, anything like that, definitely get the InGen. Um, it's worth a little extra money. You can get like some really cheap ones to go online, but this is a really great kit. Everything went in very smoothly. There was no problems basically with putting it in. Like I said, the only real problem was just making sure that the uh, mass airflow sensor went back in correctly. So, appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure you guys always like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, GPG.